magical crow. I'll hide in your belly so nobody sees me. From within you, I shall see my secrets through the time. Mum was a single parent and she was, she, was, she was quite difficult to live with. She really struggled with her own mental health issues, but she did her best. But she was quite an anxious person and often just monologued. Um, wanted to share very adult responsibilities with us and um, just treat us like sort of adult equals. And so there wasn't much childhood going on, it was more about her, just really her struggling. Sometimes she'd have a breakdown and lie on the ground, not get up for hours and say, Darby, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, mum, mum was, wasn't a mum when we were kids and it took me ages to learn how to reconcile what was late, what we worked out later was a bit of a, sh a shit childhood. Was, a lot of people seem to have we just had to um, learn to parent ourselves and parent mum as well. And so, yeah, we sort of did our, well, I did my childhood in reverse where I was, I was an adult for my entire childhood and then in my 20s, eventually, when I left mum's place, I became a kid. <laughs> Home in this town where thought you would grow there was only a step stone at the start of the river Find where you feel there is something to offer And stay for a while or at least for a day I guess one of my little first creative um, exercises was trying to reflect to mum how anxious I felt around her. And that involved, um, before mum got home, I got all her trinkets and knickknacks on all the, the, the mantelpiece and the, the side boarding and stuff and, and just put them all so they were just hanging off the edge. And so everything was on the edge. And that's how it felt. I felt on the edge with mum all the time. So mum got home and didn't notice any of these things were about to topple off. They all they could have. That was a really kind of accurate reflection of how my 12 year old brain was feeling just by putting everything on the edge. <laughs> A lot of her books I kept and she'd written in, in a lot of them. She's, yeah, she, they, she treated all her books like workbooks and had, like, she'd put post-it notes in on every single page, like, like you could flick it open, it was like a peacock of, <laughs> um, or all her books, all her psychology books and poetry books and she, yeah, she loved poetry a lot and she loved words and writing and she was definitely a better, she was a better writer than me. Um, um, but 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is a dream I had once. I told mum about this dream, and in a low voice, she said, you must never tell anyone about this dream, but you must, must listen to this crew for the rest of your life. Yeah, mum communicated through tears most of her life. Um, she cried a lot and sometimes it just annoyed me because it felt like she was just turning on the waterworks, but it was just her thing. She just, she would, that's how she communicated with crying. And so the last, last time I saw her alive where she could, could communicate was she just, when she, but when she couldn't actually talk to me, she just looked at me and cried. That was the only way she could actually communicate with me in the end, with her tears. Hold me like I am done With living here Playing for no one Cause they'll forget me Don't treat it like I don't know Yeah, so yeah, mum was diagnosed with dementia um, and she yeah, went into a psychiatric ward. Um, they were trying to work out what was wrong with her. She was diagnosed with borderline, um, which yeah, she's, she probably had, but who knows. And she was in, she, yeah, she started to deteriorate and it was really clear where it was heading. It was just a matter of time um, when she was gonna die. So we had a, um, a good, few years to sort of be with mum while she sort of be, went from being an adult to almost like an, a child very quickly. It's funny how you go in life, you go from child to adult and then you back, you head down to child again and then you child yourself out into, into the stars. How I learnt to love my mum was in my mid twenties, I learnt that not to see her as my mum, but to see mum more as my friend. And that changed and shifted everything. And mum became not my mum anymore, but more like my really fun sister. Um, and so we became sisters and that sort of, it changed it. And I had fun with her for the last 10, 12, 13, 14 years of her life. Yeah, it, just, it was just about shifting the perspective on um, how I interacted with mum. And then we, we learned to accept mum for who and what she was, like be this beautiful, eccentric, crazy lady who drove everyone fucking mad. But she, yeah, I remember walking down Ackland Street in the last few years of her life, just walking with her and she was, people just saw her as this crazy bird lady um, everyone wanted to interact with her. Everyone, every second shop owner knew her name and was up and they'd sort of talk to her like a little child. And it was kind of, I didn't see it as patronized. I thought it was kind of cute because mum started to lose her marbles a bit um, with dementia. And yeah, walking down Eklund Street, everyone knew her. She was just like this local, the local eccentric. I had a beautiful life, but also a tremendously sad life. But yeah, I, I miss her a lot. Um, but yeah, she's, yeah, she's, as the cliche is that, yeah, she's basically me now, but with a bit more, I've got dad sanity with me. So, <laughs> so yeah, she's, that's what happened in, in the end. Yeah. But I'll talk fast if it's the last word. Please go in the arms 
She died a year ago this week. Today, I saw a crow on the branch of a gnarled dead tree against looming blue-gray clouds. It looks like a living painting. Doing nothing for a while 